Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. Uh, happy Thursday to you and yours. Uh, it's, all, it's the day before Friday. The weekend is almost here. Oh, man, do we have a fantastic show planned for you today. Uh, Shamika Michelle is going to join me, as will Steve Kim. Uh, and we've just got one topic uh, today, and it's, I'm going to try to start a massive fire. Uh, with an interesting story involving uh, LeBron James. And so let's, let's don't wait. I got smoke, I got fire for everybody. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, let's get this fire started. Uh, five years ago, LeBron James claimed a vandal spray painted the N-word on the gate of his Brentwood, California mansion. At the time of the alleged incident, James and his family primarily resided in Cleveland and James was in Oakland participating in the NBA Finals. James's employees removed and painted over the racist graffiti before police arrived and could investigate. Nevertheless, uh, when discussing the crime uh, from the NBA's highest platform, James analogized what he and his family experienced to the mother of Emmett Till. The 14-year-old black boy murdered in Mississippi in 1955 for whistling at a white woman. Uh, here, let's take a listen to LeBron James speaking at the 2017 NBA Finals. I mean, as I sit here on the eve of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the eve of one of the greatest uh, sporting events that we have in sports, um, you know, race and what's going on comes again. But it just goes to show that um, that racism uh, will always be a, a part of the world, a part of America. And, um, you know, hate, um, you know, in America, especially for African American, um, is, uh, is living every day. And I think back to Emmett Till's mom, actually, it's kind of one of the first things I thought of. and. And the reason that she had an open casket is because she wanted to show the world um, what her son went through as far as a hate crime and, you know, being black in America. Um, so it's like it doesn't, no matter how much money you have, um, no matter how famous you are, no matter how many people admire you, um, you know, being, being black in America is, it's tough, and uh, and we got a long way to go, um, you know, for for us as a society and for us as African Americans until we until we feel equal um, in America. So, spray painted graffiti that LeBron James and his family never personally saw made LeBron James think of the pain Mamie Till felt over the murder of her teenage son. James, in my opinion, was lying. The hate he whined about was a hoax intended to garner sympathy and elevate his brand as a social justice warrior. I believe that in 2017 when he first said it, and I believe it even more today, anal analyzing his reaction to the murder of Ethan Lyman in a parking lot at James's celebrated Akron, Ohio, I Promise School. Lyman and his family have far more in common with Emmett and Mamie Teal than LeBron James ever will. Two weeks ago today, three men beat Ethan Lyman, a 17-year-old honor roll student, to death near an outdoor basketball court at the I Promise School. Lyman is white. His accused assailants are black. Liming and three friends were joyriding in his car and shooting a water paintball gun. That water paintball gun we're picturing there, they were shooting that out of the car. They stopped at the I Promise School. Two of Liming's friends, two black teenagers, got out of the car with the water gun and approached four men playing basketball. According to initial reports, Liming's friends fired the wa uh, water gun at the men. Three of the men 
chase Lyman's friends back to Lyman's car. Lyman, a six foot one football and baseball player, stepped out of the car and tried to calm the situation. He was attacked. The three men beat him brutally. According to witness statements and the police report, the assailants punched and kicked Lyman after he was knocked unconscious on the ground. The assailants then allegedly prevented Lyman's friends from rushing him to a hospital. The assailants snatched one of the teenager's cell phones as they tried to call for help, took Lyman's car keys, and moved his car to the opposite side of the parking lot. Lyman's third friend ran away from the scene and called police. When a police arrived, Lyman was dead. Approximately a week later, law enforcement arrested the three assailants. They've been charged with murder and sit in jail on $1 million bonds. So let me, let me give you a quick recap of what just happened here. Two black kids shot a water paintball gun at four black men, sparking a confrontation outside a white kid's car. The white kid attempted to calm the situation. The three black men beat him to death in the parking lot of the school fronted by a high profile racial justice warrior, the Muhammad Ali of the 21st century. So now you understand what happened. And so here's what LeBron James has had to say about that incident uh, from his Twitter feed. Our condolences goes out to the family who lost a loved one. My the heavens above watch over you during this tragedy. Pray for our community. LeBron's heartfelt, grammatically challenged tweet included heart and crown emojis. There was no mention of Emmett or Mamie Teal, no mention of racial hatred or racial justice. Five black kids got in a fight and the white kid who initially acted as peacemaker got killed. What would LeBron tweet if a black child was brutally beaten by three white men in the parking lot of his I Promise school? I can guarantee you he would analogize it to Emmett Till and compare 2022 America to 1955 America. What happened to Ethan Lyman is similar to what happened to Emmett Till. Till was alle allegedly trying to amuse his friends when he whistled at Carolyn Bryant, a white store shopkeeper. Days later, when told of the incident, Bryant's husband turned a would-be harmless joke into a murder that rocked America. The water gun horseplay of Liming's black friends sparked his murder. Deshaun Stafford, age 20, Tyler Stafford, age 19, and Donovan Jones, age 21, the three accused assailants, turned a harmless prank into a murder that LeBron James and his media sycophants want to ignore. LeBron wore a hoodie to protest the death of Trayvon Martin, a teenage boy in Sanford, Florida. LeBron ranted that black people are hunted every day after two white men shot Ahmaud Arbery. LeBron put a, a target on the back of a white Ohio police officer after he shot a teenage black girl who was attempting to stab a black woman. So all of this stuff in Ohio, uh, in, in Florida, uh, where Ahmaud Arbery, did that happen in Alabama somewhere? LeBron's got smoke for all of them people. But when violence and racial violence comes to his school parking lot, LeBron has nothing to say. LeBron has smoke for everyone white, he believes wrongly takes a life. He has nothing substantive to say when black people take lives. LeBron James is a stereotypical racist bigot. Racial bigotry of any stripe is rooted in lust for power. The KKK 
terrorize black and white people who failed to support the racist policies of the Democratic Party. That's not an opinion. It's a historical fact. The, the KKK, founded in 1865, shortly after the Civil War, shortly after black people started seizing political power, the KKK was founded right here in Tennessee. And they started terrorizing people that wouldn't get on board with the Democrats' racist policies. It's always rooted in power, lust, for it. That's where racism is rooted. LeBron is a political soldier for the Democratic Party. His bigotry is rooted in lust for political power. Democrats have painted their political opponents as bigots. It's LeBron's job to promote that narrative. He pounces on every high profile opportunity and he's not above going the Jesse Smollett route and creating faux hate crimes. This dude analogized himself to Mamie Teal at the behest of his political puppet masters. He will never address the family dysfunction and chaos that leads to far too many black boys and black men settling conflict with deadly violence. The DNC, the Dead Negroes Confederacy, loves dead Negroes. The DNC forbids its constituents from publicly discussing the pervasive violence that plagues black communities and leads to dead Negroes. That issue is to be ignored until it magically disappears from indifference. Indifference is one of the most deadly and lethal emotions. LeBron James is indifferent to the violence that killed Ethan Lyman. LeBron, like many leftists, expects black men to randomly kill. LeBron James is a bigot, and he looks natural and comfortable in that KKK hood and robe. That's who LeBron James is. He's got to wear that. His actions say that. A kid was killed in a racial incident at his high school that he's run around and beat his chest and he's proud of, and he has virtually nothing to say about it. And the entire media that has celebrated this guy and all oh, the school and he cares about the community and all, they have nothing to say about this. If a black kid had been beaten to death at LeBron James's I Promise School. They would cancel an NBA Finals game. We've seen it before. If a black kid was beaten by three white men, stomped into the ground while unconscious, they would shut down the NBA. Everybody on ESPN would be uh, going off every show from first take all the way through. Every show would be littered with comments about, oh my God, this is a tragedy and, and the NBA can't play and, and uh, America is, is, is no different than 1835. But a white child gets assassinated at LeBron James's school and this dude can't even take the time to grammatically spell check, fact check, punctuate a damn tweet. This is buffoonery. This is evil wickedness. This is bigotry. Everybody can see it. I'm tired of it. It, it, it's, it's almost like we as black people have said, we don't want to end racism, we want to benefit from it. We want to participate in it. We want to be the people we claim we despise. 
racist white people. We have to wear that and deal with it. And I'm just sorry, as a Christian, I, I reject it. Uh, Shamika Michelle, uh, thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, I'm fired up today. Again, I, I've, I've always thought LeBron was a hypocrite. I thought the thing at the Brentwood Mansion was a Jussie Smollett hoax that no one could, you know, pr prove it, but it just didn't add up. I, I, I just, I've lost all respect for LeBron James. I, I just, your thoughts. You know, Jason, what's so telling about this tweet is after years of telling us, say her name, say his name, LeBron was so unconcerned that he didn't even put his name, Ethan's name, in the tweet. And I think that it speaks volumes, uh, you know, when we talk about how black people have become the savages that we claim white people are. We talk about that and, and we say that we are so spiritually enlightened. For years, I've heard black people say, oh, white people are savages. That's why they do the things that they do. They're evil, but we could never be like that. We are telling lies and we are not acknowledging the savagery that we are starting to portray as well. Our kids, are savage. They are not being raised right. We don't care. We are so apathetic when we see horrible things happen whenever it's done to white people. I watched, uh, there was a young man that was killed by his white girlfriend, a black man back in April. Because he had said disparaging things about black women or his preference was white women, I saw people get in the comments on, on the shade room and say, so, they didn't care. That's what he deserved. He deserved to be stabbed to death because he preferred white women. That's savagery. And this is coming from a people who claim to be spiritually enlightened. That's what we say about us. That's why we say we went through slavery for so many years. We endured the Jim Crow era because we are just good hearted people. Well, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, so what are our actions saying now? Because I'm not seeing good hearts. I don't see do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, and because people always like to complain, oh, what if we aren't Christians? Where well, I look Looked, um, I didn't do a deep dive, but I looked into Buddhism. I looked into the laws of Mayat. I even looked into the Quran. Nothing justifies having this type of hate in your heart or wanting revenge for someone that never did anything to you. We have such a deep seated hate for white people because of what our ancestors endured from their ancestors. It has nothing to do with us. And the Quran goes as far as to say, if you are going to take revenge, make sure it's in the same portion as what was done to you. So why are we so hateful? Why are we so mean? And if we believe white people are such savages, why are we mimicking their behavior? I'll go a step further. And, and this is, again, you know, this is why we call the show Fearless, and you certainly are. But... If, if white people were who people like LeBron James and them say they are, and oh man, we can't even go outside and walk, we're being hunted every day. First time we get any money, we move to a white neighborhood and we call it success and progress and we brag about it. And we invite everybody from our family out to come see our, our house in the white neighborhood surrounded by all these white people that allegedly hate us. And so it, it, it's, we're, we're playing a game with ourselves and everybody else is just, has no choice but to just giggle and laugh at us because it's so obvious our dishonesty. It, 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 it's just incredibly dishonest. I was talking to my mother yesterday and, and you know, I'm from Indianapolis, my mother lives in Indianapolis and, and she was making the comment about how violent things have become in Indianapolis and how uh, there are murders on a daily basis. And she was saying how, you know, 
she was talking about COVID. One of her friends had COVID or whatever. We were talking about something. And she goes, I'm not afraid of COVID. I'm afraid of being in the wrong neighborhood or at the wrong place at the wrong time and getting swept up in some of this violence. I'm more afraid of that than COVID. And, and that is a reality for a lot of black people across America. And we somehow think there's some benefit to being indifferent or ignoring that, or just one day, you know what, our kids that we refuse to properly raise are just gonna snap out of it and, and they're not gonna settle conflict by killing someone. And, and that is how our kids settle, too many of our kids, I'm not gonna say all, but too many of our kids settle conflict and I'm saying, uh, oh, you can't generalize, that's not all. We sit around and generalize about white people constantly. And, and we think they're not privately in their homes uh, uh, sit around generalizing about us, that that's not a two-way street. And, and privately, we sit around and generalize. Because again, I was talking to my mother and talked to plenty of my friends. We, we know the deal. We know what we're really afraid of. And we're afraid of the young people we have neglected to raise properly and put in all these dysfunctional homes and single baby mama homes and, and all of that and, and, and wonder, and LeBron knows it. That, that's what, again, he could speak to any and all of this. He's kept his family together. Mm -hmm. He's trying to do better for his kids than when, what was done for him, but will say nothing about like, whoa. Because I guarantee you, when we do the homework on these three guys accused of this crime, they, they, they didn't. I, I, and it's speculation, but they didn't come from the Huxtable two-parent home. They, 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 it, it wasn't Aunt Bev and uh, Uncle Phil, uh, you know. So, Shamika, I, I, I will give you a chance for a final thought here before I let you go. Uh, Jason, I want to say when it comes to generalizations, I don't really worry about whether I wh whether or not I say some or all. I expect people to be intelligent enough to be able to put their own quantitives or whatever on it. If you know it's not you, if you know somebody that it doesn't refer to, then you know we aren't saying all. Be smart enough to make your own, you know, come to your own conclusions. That aggravates me about us. We'll hop right into something and we'll want to discard the entire message because somebody didn't say many or some or all. Be smart enough to know that on your own. I shouldn't have to do that for you. You said in school, school just like I did. You should be able to do that. And when it comes to you saying that they probably weren't raised in, in two parent homes, I would go along with that as well. And because Father's Day is coming up, I want to make sure that we point out that we have so many women running around here claiming that they're both the mother and the father. Well, I want us to look at what our children are doing. We just had a young man murdered here two nights ago, 20 years old. Crime is rising right here in my own city. So women, if you are raising these children and you are the mother and the father, you are doing a terrible job in both roles. Thank you so much. I got to take care of some business. Great job, Shamika. Uh, this is not a commercial. This is not another endorsement. This is life or death. Of course, I'm Jason Whitlock, and here at The Blaze, uh, we're building a village of Blaze babies with a goal of rescuing 50,000 babies from abortion. Let me tell you a little bit about Preborn and how they have rescued over 188,000 babies' lives. When a woman, under pressure to abort her baby, meets that baby and hears the precious heartbeat, it's a game changer because 80% of the time, she will choose life. Preborn clinics are located in the highest abortion areas in the country, standing strong for mothers in crisis and introducing them to the beautiful life growing inside of them. Would you join us in rescuing preborn babies? One ultrasound is just $28, or you can sponsor five ultrasounds for $140 and save five babies' lives. All gifts are tax deductible. To donate securely, call pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250 keyword baby or go to preborn.com slash fearless. That's preborn.com slash fearless. Let's do it. Let's save babies lives. Be a good fearless soldier. This is a step you can take.
that will have real impact. We're always looking for ways how we can push back in this culture. Preborn, perfect way to do it. All right, Steve Kim, X. All right, welcome back. Uh, before we go to the Korean Cosell, Steve Kim, let me take care of a little bit more business here uh, and talk about a new partner we have, Upside. Uh, from cringing at the pump to getting eye-popping checks at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting all of us where it hurts, and it really hurts. And that's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside, check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid. No, this is not a gimmick. This is for real. Upside isn't too good to be true. It really works, and Upside is a no-brainer. Download the free Upside app and use promo code FEARLESS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. You can't beat that with a baseball bat. Use my promo code FEARLESS. Look, inflation is hitting all of us. I got, I, even I gotta admit, inflation's hurting me. Upside is a great counter to offset some of this inflation. They're a sponsor that likes us, likes you, likes our way of life. Upside, use my promo code FEARLESS. All right. Let's roll out, uh, let's bring in uh, my man Steve Kim. All right, Cosell, Steve Kim, I have started a massive fire. I'm fired up today. Uh, Shamika Michelle certainly helped fan the flames. Uh, look, man, LeBron James and the way he's handled this murder, alleged murder, that happened in the parking lot of the school that he thumps his chest and everyone gives him credit for. And, and we know dang well if a black kid had been murdered, beaten brutally to death by three white guys in the parking lot of the I Promise School, Le LeBron James would be calling for a halt to the NBA season and he'd be grandstanding, but he's a, I'm just, LeBron James is a bigot in my opinion, Steve, uh, am I going too far? You know, that, that's a tough one, but I've said several years ago, there is no such thing as reverse racism. Racism is racism. Bottom line, two plus two is four, and when you start saying reverse racism, it's as if you're justifying other forms of it. And I read your column today, and a great fire starter that was Mr. Whitlock. I just go back to last summer, we had a police officer that literally saved the life of a young female because she was about to get stabbed. The officer in question shot the perpetrator. And instead of lauding this guy's courage or just ability to do the job, LeBron James promptly put a target on his back. And I thought that was about as irresponsible uh, as it got. And that is the issue with LeBron James. And well, let's go back to when he supposedly had the swastika painted on the front of his house out in Southern California. We are in such a visual medium where everyone tries to get social media clout and images go viral. Everyone plays for retweet and likes. I was always suspicious that LeBron James, of all people, first of all, supposedly had that painted in front of his property, and then he paints over it. No one took a picture. You didn't tweet about it. You didn't make it an Instagram story because that thing would have gone absolutely viral. But instead, it's painted over magically, very quickly, and then, like, he almost never talks about it again, but then he then he invokes the name of Emmett Till. A lot of this is grandstanding, but it goes again to show you that LeBron James is playing this very, very dangerous game of really toying with people's emotions. And we have to be very blunt and honest about this. If you actually really uh, study Akron 
and their crime statistics and homicides. There's a lot going on there on a daily basis that he himself never talks about. And I've always found that strange. And you're right. We could say it, Jason, if the roles were reversed, and this was with three white men uh, entering, ending up committing a homicide on a young black man, there would actually be talks, in my view, based on what you said, Jason, and I don't disagree, that some of the players would be saying, do we really need to be playing game six tonight of the NBA Finals? Let's just face it. That's the fact. We don't have to like it, but that's just the way it is. So, Steve, and I understand your reluctance to call LeBron James a bigot because I, I think the word racist and racism gets tossed around way too often and you don't want to adopt their tactics. Anybody they disagree with, well, they're racist or they're a bigot. And, and, and so I, I get that reluctance, but I disagree with it in this case. I think LeBron's actions have been so repeated, so consistent, and, 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 and so one-sided. I, 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 I th and, and again, I'm very much aware that he works with white people and Adam Mendelssohn and others are his real puppet masters, and I'm sure he's in bed with uh, the Clintons, Bill and Hillary, and the whole political left and, and white people on the left. But, but my contention, again, I'm, I'm not asking you to go there with me. You don't have to uh, totally, you don't have to agree with me, but my argument for why I'm saying he is a bigot is based on his actions and who he has aligned himself with. These leftists, these Democrats, their history, and I do, LeBron's a political animal. He climbed in bed with them all, and he climbed in bed with Black Lives Matters, and he started, uh, he and Kamala Harris out funding the rioters, bail funds, and all that other stuff. LeBron James, his consistent behavior, who he's aligned with, the, 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 the logic that he uses is racist, and, 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 and makes him a bigot, not, just against white people, but I contend he's bigoted towards black people. And, hmm. and, and I'm not talking about the elites. I'm talking about, and there are, he's not alone in this. There are, this is why so many black people are so accepting of the violent behavior of our young people because we've accepted it. We're indifferent to it. Our, Expectations have been so lowered. Oh, we hear, oh, someone squirted me with a water gun and it led to a fight and we killed someone. Well, <laughs> that's what kid, you know, let's look the other way. This is, we expect a lack of emotional control from our young people. And so we're, again, I contend many black people are racist against black people and you see it by their lowered expectations. Well, they can't yeah. do well in school. We got to lower the standards. And so I, I, I'm, LeBron James is a Democrat and he's a KKK member and, and, the, and, and <laughs> he, he's a soldier well. out imposing their bigotry on the rest of us. And I say that in all seriousness. Well, Jason, there's that old phrase, show me the standards you have for somebody and that's what you think of them. But there's a lot to unpack in what you said about LeBron James. I just think he lacks self-awareness and is not that intelligent. He's a basketball savant. I will never take that away from him. But we have to understand uh, his whole life. From the time he was 11 or 12, when genetically he grew and his basketball skills evolved with him, he was taken out of his natural environment. He went to a private Catholic school, right? He didn't go to the regular high school in Akron. Basically, outside of the athletes, I'm willing to guess or I'm assuming 99.9% .9 of that school population is probably white. So already he's already into that mindset. Then he skips college, then he goes to the NBA, a lot of corporate interests with him. I felt this for a while, and I've told you this before, Jason, a lot of these athletes or these public figures, um, they have, I believe, survivor's guilt, that because they made it out and that they are successful and they are now allowed to live among the white folks that they say they hate, they almost have to preach this uh, message that I don't really like white people either. 
I'm being hunted, they're evil, even though you do all your business with them, right? That's your way of saying, hey, I'm still with you. I, I, I'm still down with the cause. Uh, meanwhile, I'm in Mayberry. Th that's the reality. I think a lot of this is cosplay, or in other words, saying, hey, I'm still black. I'm so black that I've made it that uh, I'm going to live in a white neighborhood. Th that has been the pattern for about 35, 40 years, has it not, Jason? I, I think you make... A, a great argument and, and a compelling one and, and justifies your position that that there is this survivor's guilt that many people feel and, and, and they LeBron James and others have been convinced that the blackest thing you can be is a victim and so we've trained black people to look to vic for victimhood and, and so LeBron, oh my God, they painted the N-word on a gate at my house. I'm a victim just like you. And he made that statement mm. that, you know, no matter how rich you get, no matter how much success you have, there's still people that, that hate you and blah, blah, and think you're the N-word, basically is, is, is what he was saying. And, and again, the, you can make so much money and live such a comfortable life and you get tired of people tweeting at you or commenting that you sold out and you look around your neighborhood and all your neighbors are white people or Asian or they don't look like you. And, and so you start saying, well, if I can just be a victim, I can keep mm. my black card. Uh, and so totally agree. But where I d disagree is like, this dude is from Akron. Someone on the school that he takes all of this credit for, 17-year-old kid with a 4.03 GPA, this kid's father is a minister at a church. He's, he's 17, bright future ahead of him. He gets beaten down when he initially tried to be a peacemaker in a fight a dispute between five black kids or ki two of them are kids the other three are 21 20 and 19 young adults and 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 you see this kid's life snatched from him or hear about his life snatched from him on your property now if you're you can compare yourself to Emmett Till because some property your second home in California allegedly gets vandalized and you can sit in front of the media and talk about how oh, I feel like Emmett Till's mama, that's how much pain I'm feeling, blah, blah, blah. But someone gets killed, a young person gets killed on your property where you've taken all this credit and you've got nothing? You have nothing heartfelt to say? You can't even spell check, grammatically ch check a tweet. You can't get someone who actually knows how to read and write to, to, to correct your tweet before sending out and, and put these little heart and crown emojis on it. I, I just, that, and, and, and I know what the difference is. It's the skin color of the victim and the color of the perpetrators. And so if that's the difference, if that changes your reaction, well, the victim's white, perpetrators are black, I'm not gonna get as emotional. If that's what the difference is, how come I can't say, oh, you gotta be a bigot, a young person, life snatched from them on your property, and, and the only, you, you don't have any emotion about it and any real feelings about it because they're white? That sounds bigoted to me, Steve. Yeah, and look, I, I hope I don't ruffle any feathers, but I don't give a damn. It's almost like this debate over gun control laws. Every time there's a Uvalde or a mass shooting with a white perpetrator, the Second Amendment becomes a hot-button issue, and everyone takes their political side, and it's, it, it, and it's almost like everyone plays off script. Meanwhile... Every day in certain cities, we know which ones they are, and there are murders going on every day. In fact, there's a lot more mass shootings that aren't reported because, A, the victims, and most importantly, the perpetrators do not fit a racial profile. It's the most dishonest argument and political 
uh, football that I've seen in the last 10 years. LeBron plays that game. You know, I, I think it's really interesting that even LeBron, who may be the most famous athlete in the world, certainly one of the most powerful figures in the world of sports and entertainment, and the adulation that he receives on a daily basis with very little criticism, whether it's him or an individual that has 25 followers that's an anonymous figure, there's almost like this yearning for that dopamine rush that when you get the plot, it's whether it's a like or a retweet or comments really praising what you said. And I will say this, LeBron, for his lack of self-awareness and sometimes what I believe is not being very intelligent as an overall individual, he even realizes, and it's very calculating, that if I take this position at what these young men did was murder, that there is no place for it in any society, and they should be locked up behind bars and never see the light of sunrise, uh, uh, the sun again, it won't play well to his core audience. And, and it proves my point or my belief that everybody, to a certain degree, performs on social media. You have said this before, Jason, there's no doubt about it. LeBron's the type of individual, he literally should not care about what anyone else says outside of his loved ones. But again, uh, he has a business to run. And part of his business is this persona as this revolutionary figure for his people. Steve, let's get to the approval rating. I'm gonna let you go. I think you're in New York uh, for a fight. Uh, I want to get to our approval rating here on LeBron James. Uh, job performance, they didn't make the playoffs. LeBron had a big season, uh, still played real well at a, at a high level, uh, but they didn't make the playoffs. The Lakers were a disaster. I gave him a 17 in job performance. He still statistically was very good. I think finally there is some physical erosion on what has been a magnificent career. But again, winning matters. He did a little bit of stat padding this season, which was caught on by even some of the mainstream media was saying, wait a minute, why are, why are you in this ball game late in blowouts? It's obviously he's just trying to catch cream. So for that, I knock him down. I give him a 15. Uh, character, I'm, I'm just sorry. Today... I don't feel like LeBron has any character at all. I, I, the way he's handled this Ethan Lyman murder, uh, I, I gave him a zero in character. He has none. You know, look, he's done some good things. I did not give him much of a score here. Look, I'm not going to completely overlook a lot of the terrible stuff he's done, including the school. I actually think he cares. I just don't think he's intelligent to understand how hypocritical he looks. So for that, I give him a five. Uh, authenticity, uh, I don't find him very authentic. Uh, I think he's got puppet masters, obviously at Nike and other places. Uh, he's puppeted by, you know, the political left and Nike and China. Uh, so I don't find him very authentic. I gave him a five in authenticity. Mm, interesting. Yeah, you use that word puppet. He might be the most famous puppet since Kermit the Flo Frog. I, I, I get it. Sometimes I literally believe there's like a string. I mean, I, like who's his coach? Geppetto? Is he Pinocchio? It's almost like you could almost really word for word predict what he's going to say about certain issues. And for that, I'm going to give him a five. Uh, it factor. Uh... You know, I think he's losing some of that allure. Aren't they saying NBA playoff ratings are halfway decent? He wasn't even a part mm -hmm. of it. So I, I gave him a 22 in it factor. You know, he used to be the biggest deal in the NBA. I think he's starting to lose that grip. You're, you're going you're gonna to be stunned, though, Jason. If you look at his career as a whole, top to bottom, I, I'm actually favorable towards LeBron. I think he's been a magnificent player. I think he makes an argument for one being one of the top three NBA players of all time. I know you might disagree, but his overall floor game, his generalship. And look, he came in with a lot of hype. I remember the Slam Magazine story back in 2001. He's actually exceeded those expectations. So for that, I begrudgingly have to give him a 25. Mm. All right, I've got him at a 44 overall. He's a dumpster fire. Uh, you've got him a candle lit a 50. Yeah. Hey, uh, don't play tomorrow. D take tomorrow down. Uh, Steve, I'm going to let you go, but i got a little bit more I'm going to say here. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, good job. Uh, and we'll play tomorrow here, here shortly. This may only take a couple of minutes, but...
My final thoughts on this whole LeBron thing. Uh, Ethan Lyman is getting buried tomorrow. Uh, I communicated with uh, someone in Ethan's family uh, earlier today. And I just want you to think about this. And because and, and, we've seen uh, professional athletes uh, over the years, tragedy happens, and your story will come out. Well, so and so's paying for the funeral. That story hasn't been leaked. LeBron James, as far as we know, isn't paying for the, and I didn't ask the people in this family, but LeBron James isn't paying for the funeral of Ethan Lyman, who was murdered at the I Promise School. Uh, I haven't heard a story that, and, and maybe I'll be surprised tomorrow, to, maybe, maybe LeBron will be there. I haven't heard that story, that he's planning to attend the funeral. I guarantee you this, if it were a black kid, he would be there. And this Ethan Lyman had no problem with black kids, none. Two of the friends he was there with were black kids. The reason why he stepped out of the car when the guys came running to the car is because Ethan Lyman didn't have a racist bone in his body. If he were racist and he saw three black men who, I'm just sorry, Call me names, say I'm an idiot, but they didn't look like uh, potential college kids when they ran up to the car. Based off their, the mug shots I saw of them, they looked like what they were, potentially violent people who would beat up a person over a water gun incident that that person didn't do. But if Ethan Liming were racist, he would have stayed in the car out of fear of those young black men that approached his car looking for trouble. But he, de he wasn't racist. He didn't have a racist bone in his body, so he got out of the car thinking he could calm the situation down. And so LeBron James should be at that funeral, should, be, and again, this Ethan Lyman, his family is not wealthy by any stretch. His dad runs a church and, you know, his dad ain't rich. His dad's a minister at a church. LeBron James, I'm sure, this is according to the family. Ethan Lyman, huge LeBron James fan. His favorite athlete. He gets killed at LeBron James' school. We've heard no reports of LeBron James attending this funeral, paying for this funeral. We've heard nothing other than this little garbage tweet he put out, this typo-filled, grammatically challenged tweet he put out. I, I, I just don't respect it. This is bigoted behavior. LeBron James is a bigot. He's a puppet of the Democratic Party and, and the, the, the new KKK. That's why we dressed him up and put him in a KK hood and robe. He deserves that. And I know people will see that and think, oh, Whitlock, he's gone too far. That ain't fair. Yes, it is. This is racist behavior by LeBron James. All right, now play tomorrow. Uh, and we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Waiting for the countdown, coming off the breakdown, standing in line for freedom. Looking for a breakout, feeling like a standoff, nothing in life like freedom. Came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation, we all just want to have freedom. Sitting on the corner, never been alone, I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back, we are receiving, all deceiving, we all want to be free.